Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. My partner, Art Kirsch, and I are with our best friend, Bill Jordan, the man who embraces the boom. And Bill, do you remember years and years ago, being a kid, Halloween... Wasn't it? Wasn't it one of the best holidays ever? Because so, you, so, so you got free, got free stuff. Thanks for welcoming everybody back and letting me lead into this very exciting. Oh, okay. let's do it again. I, I'm no, 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 no. Well, I'll, uh, no, no. I think let's just continue on, okay? No, no. So, hi, Bill Jordan. How I'm are you? I'm too embarrassed. I'm okay? too embarrassed. And, I'm leaving. Okay. That's it. We wish you would. So, anyway, celebrating um, Act Two. It's a well-oiled machine. It is. So. Anyway, uh, what I had already planned in my head to say, and John will appreciate this, is that, you know, I was in the supermarket yesterday during senior hour uh, between 6 and 7 a.m. at the local Ralph's because we're on the West Coast. And I was seeing their pumpkins and I was seeing those brooms that smell like, what, uh, cinnamon or something? And and uh, uh, those uh, little cones from the from trees and stuff, and I was saying, boy, Halloween must be coming. And then I thought to myself immediately, okay, I thought to myself, Bill Jordan lives on the East Coast, in the Southeast, and I wonder whether or not, A, Halloween is the same there as it was in the Northeast that John and I came from, or even in California, where John and I are now. So, Bill Jordan, tell us things about Halloween that we might not know and how you're Preparing for it. <laughs> well, I think, you know, Halloween might be a pretty standard thing. Now, our kids uh, here typically don't have to bundle up <laughs> in the Raleigh area, you know, where you wear your skeleton outfit and you got your heavy coat and your mucklock and your and your Yukon hat on top, uh, as opposed to the frozen tundra of the Northeast, perhaps. Um, so, um, no, I mean, it's just, I think it's one of those universals. And, uh, I tell you that the the thing that has really impressed me the last couple of years with our trick or treaters, uh, overall, they, 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 it's kind of like r ran in a cycle there for a while, but it's come back. Last year, all the kids were so polite. Ooh. There was lots of there was lots of thank you, thank you, you know. Now sometimes our little pet peeve is they come to the door and they ring the door, you know, and you go to the door and they just look at you. It's like, well, you know, you, you're supposed to say something, and then I give you something. Oh, yeah, trick or treat, man, whatever, you know. Right. Uh, but, you know, th no, here in the last couple of years, man, it's really, we've got a good batch of kids. And um, and then there's some that are a little older than they probably shouldn't be doing the trick or treating thing. But, you know, what the heck, I throw a piece of candy at them. And, yeah, those, yeah, are, the, send them on their those way. are the parents, Bill. The could, be, could be the parents. Well, you know, here's a little trick for you guys. If you, you know, you hear that there's a house giving out good stuff, you uh, you go to their house, you take a pair of shoes, just a pair of shoes, uh, put on some kind of a costume, put on the shoes, and then before you ring the doorbell, you put the shoes down, you kneel down on the shoes with the bag, and then ring the doorbell, and you look like a little kid. Mm. And, and you, you still do, you you, still do you that, Bill? You can't walk away while they're there. You say, thank you, and they shut the door. Then you stand up, pick up your shoes, and walk to the next house. But now, it's a Bill, pretty Bill, good stamp. Bill, are you still doing that, Bill? I, I cannot confirm nor deny that I may or may not still be doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear that somebody's giving out Reese cups. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're because there. I'm, 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 um, I have come to this belief because I, I, I know what happens if we give out the good stuff. If we give out the good stuff and the doorbell rings and I go to the door and give everybody some candy, before I get back to my chair, I've downed the Reese cups and the, you know, <laughs> the Snickers bars and you know, I'm helping myself every time I go to the door. One for you, two for me. So we buy what I call the crap candy. We buy, uh, we buy stuff I don't like. And that way I don't gain 17 pounds on Halloween night. That's mm. good. That's good. What about now? You're not one of those people. Maybe art. Maybe you're one of those people that gives out healthy stuff. <laughs> no, no. Like like there was one guy in our neighborhood where we used to live. He gave out toothbrushes. Yeah. Every kid got a toothbrush. That's it. 
and the kids would go, what? Ah, 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 happy Halloween. That's when, that's when the old tradition of the trick instead of the treat should have been reinstated. But they well, don't do that anymore. Well, I'll, it's I'll tell you. Now that it's you, a treat or a treat. Now that you asked, when I was a kid going around, okay, it was trick or treat and people would dump uh, just free M&Ms and other kinds of candy yeah. that they got out of the big bowl. And then yeah. uh, you had all these things where kids were uh, being given uh, things that were, I don't even want to talk about the stuff people started giving away. So right. It had to be individually wrapped uh, uh, Mars bars and, and right. Snickers and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's more recent than the last 15 years. Yeah. Right. And, then, and, and also all the kids walked around by themselves. Yes. Okay. And if you were really, really a dirtbag, uh, then some of the older kids that you said, get out of here, kids, you're too old for that, would TP your house. Now, yes. getting your house toilet papered is sort of like at least uh, 20 years ago when my kids were in high school, that was a sign that you were somebody special, that somebody would actually go to the trouble to do your house. Right. So that was well, like you wouldn't everyone. do it now because toilet paper's like gold. I mean, it's like <laughs> it hasn't been too that far, you know, that far in the rearview mirror that you couldn't find it. So I don't think there's going to be anybody throwing it over your house anymore. Ex ex so, except, well. except if they really liked you, they would leave the core because those are the seeds. So they would leave you those so that you could plant them and grow your own toilet paper. But uh, nice. but now, now, <laughs> and I also remember the time uh, at some point by 8 o'clock in the evening, you got tired of the doorbell ring, you'd shut the lights. And any light that emanated from the front. So you'd take the car and park it around the corner so that it looked like your house was empty. But, <laughs> but the secret is that now I live in a community that's over 55, and we don't get trick-or-treaters. You don't get any trick-or-treaters, right. yeah. Right. Yeah. But so anyway, it, uh, 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 well, John, you live in a more rural area than we I, do, and and you know it's an interesting. I call it a phenomenon, but it's probably uh, standard everywhere, uh, in really um, ex-urban or more suburban areas where the houses are not too close together. Um, our kids don't have any other kids in the neighborhood, so they hop in the car and they go to a friend's neighborhood. Where, which is a development, and you know, there's uh, houses every 50 feet, 100 feet, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and so th they go up and down the streets of that neighborhood with their friends, and that's their trick or treating because nobody comes here. You know, you'd get lost if you got here. So. We've got kids in our neighborhood, but yeah, we have others that are brought in. I mean, there's like you know, people bringing <laughs> in minivans, and you know, kids are being dropped off and coming through the neighborhood, which well, again, they, I mean, that's fine. They know you've got the good treat, so they're shipping them in, yeah. Well, they know the neighborhood in, as a general, in the, on the whole, our neighborhood is good. But as I referenced, I give away the crap candy. So word, word goes around pretty quickly about, yeah, that guy's kind of, you know. Yeah, but I understand some of the kids come because you give me our free three-minute voice uh, uh, telephone answering or. Oh, yeah, all they, the kids want that. that they want yeah, that. They line up for that, right? Sure, they line up for that, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Well, it, it, here's the Halloween, guys. I, I hope it's a tradition that continues uh, unfettered and that uh, everybody enjoys it for centuries to come. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. And, and up until the time they can embrace the boom and then become old codgers where they're uh, giving out the candy <laughs> instead of accepting the candy. Well, I don't know about the old codger thing, but I enjoy it. I enjoy when they come and, and interacting with the kids and stuff. You know, what are you supposed to be? What are you? Oh, you're a ninja. What are you? Okay. So anyway, I, I enjoy that. But thanks for having me on again, guys. And again, for all my baby boomer uh, friends and those of, of similar ilk, just that reminder of live your life, forget your age and embrace the boom, whatever you're doing. Thanks for having me on again. Amen. Thank See you, you soon, Bill. Thank, Thank you. you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.